From the 8th to the 13th centuries, a remarkable period unfolded. This era, known as the Golden Age of Islamic Science, saw an explosion of knowledge. Scholars from diverse backgrounds flocked to centers of learning. These scholars were driven by a thirst for understanding the natural world. They built upon the foundations laid by ancient Greeks and Indians. They made groundbreaking discoveries in mathematics, astronomy, medicine, and more. Thinkers like Ibn Sina, also known as Avicenna, revolutionized medicine with the canon of medicine. Al-Khwarizmi gifted us algebra, a cornerstone of modern mathematics. Shift in history. Picture bustling cities like Baghdad, Cordoba and Cairo. These were the hubs of the Golden Age. Institutions like madrasas played a crucial role. These schools and universities attracted brilliant minds from far and wide. The translation movement was another cornerstone of this era. Scholars meticulously translated ancient Greek, Persian and Indian texts into Arabic. This made a wealth of knowledge accessible to a wider audience. Guilds too played a vital role fostering expertise in fields like medicine and astronomy. The 13th century marked a turning point. The Mongol invasions, particularly the siege of Baghdad in 1258, dealt a devastating blow. This event led to the destruction of countless libraries and centers of learning. The loss of invaluable manuscripts and the displacement of scholars had a profound impact. The fragmentation of the Islamic world into smaller states also played a role. This fragmentation often led to a decline in patronage for scientific endeavors. The focus shifted to more immediate concerns like consolidating power and defending borders. As a result, the momentum of scientific inquiry began to slow. Phenomenon across the Islamic world, issues that could have been achieved with a more inclusive system. The concentration of knowledge institutions in urban centers created a disparity. Cities like Baghdad, Cordoba, and Cairo flourished as centers of learning. However, rural areas often lacked access to the same resources and opportunities. This urban-rural divide limited the spread of scientific ideas and hindered progress. Imagine a young, budding astronomer living in a remote village. Without access to a library, observatory or mentors, their potential might remain unfulfilled. This geographical disparity in access to education played a significant role in the decline. Bridging this gap, would have been crucial for sustaining scientific momentum. Collaboration and exchange of ideas yielded incredible returns. Scientific advancement began to weaken. The way resources are distributed within a society significantly impacts its intellectual output. As the Islamic world faced economic challenges, funding for scientific endeavors was often among the first casualties. Military campaigns, courtly expenses, and maintaining vast empires took precedence. While these were undoubtedly important considerations for rulers, the opportunity cost was high. Furthermore, changes in taxation policies also played a role. In some cases, taxes that once supported scholars and institutions were redirected or increased, placing additional strain on scientific pursuits. Imagine the impact on a young scholar who could no longer afford books, materials, or the time to dedicate to research. The economic squeeze combined with other factors created a challenging environment for science to flourish. The political landscape of the Islamic world played a crucial role in the trajectory of its scientific pursuits. During the Golden Age, the Abbasid Caliphate, with Baghdad as its vibrant center, provided a degree of stability and unity. This facilitated the flow of scholars and ideas across vast distances, fostering an environment of intellectual exchange. However, this political unity was not to last. By the 13th century, the once mighty Caliphate began to fragment. Smaller, independent states emerged, often vying for power and resources. This fragmentation had significant consequences for scientific progress. The centralized support and patronage that had once characterized the Golden Age dwindled. The latter scenario became increasingly common.
The attitude of political leaders towards scientific inquiry varied considerably across time and place. Some rulers embraced scientific advancement as a source of prestige and a means to strengthen their realms. They established observatories, funded research expeditions, and provided patronage to brilliant minds from far and wide. Their courts became centers of intellectual ferment, attracting scholars from diverse backgrounds who pushed the boundaries of human knowledge. However, other regimes took a different approach, viewing certain scientific ideas with suspicion or even outright hostility. Censorship, though not widespread, did occur in some instances, particularly when scientific theories were perceived as challenging established religious doctrines or undermining the authority of the ruling elite. This suppression of intellectual freedom stifled scientific progress and created a climate of fear and conformity. These contrasting approaches highlight the significant influence that political factors and the decisions of those in power had on the trajectory, while not universally dominant, did contribute to a stifling of the spirit of free inquiry that had once characterized the Golden Age. The Islamic world's ability to keep pace with the rapid advancements taking place elsewhere disputes remained comparatively limited. This difference in priorities is reflected in the types of institutions that flourished in each region reflected a growing awareness of the need to bridge the gap in scientific knowledge and adapt to a rapidly changing world and critical analysis into a modern context. Revitalizing science requires more than good intentions. It demands a concrete plan of action, a roadmap for progress. First and foremost, we need to invest in science. Governments, businesses and private individuals must recognize that scientific research is not an expenditure but an investment in a brighter future. This means providing adequate funding for research institutions, universities and individual scholars. It also means creating incentives for innovation such as tax breaks for companies engaged in research and development. Second, we need to break down the barriers to knowledge. Open access to scientific journals, data and educational resources should be the norm, not the exception. Translation efforts should be revitalized, making scientific knowledge accessible in multiple languages. Third, we need to foster interdisciplinary collaboration. The most pressing challenges facing our world climate change, pandemics, resource scarcity, demand solutions that transcend traditional boundaries of scientific disciplines. We need to establish research centers where physicists work alongside biologists, where engineers collaborate with social scientists, and where the lines between fields become blurred, leading to new insights and breakthroughs. The torch of knowledge burning. Their stories remind us that change is possible, that progress is within reach. Imagine a brighter future.